Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me on this channel. Uh, this is a really special episode uh, today. Um, one of my colleagues from work, his name is Greg, and uh, he is a friend uh, that has really helped me on my journey. He is one that I actually look up to. I, I would call him a mentor, and um, he has helped me so much, and he has a, a ton of knowledge. He is, he is someone that uh, has tried almost everything that you can imagine in terms of fo film photography. He happened to bring in um, one of his large format cameras. So just taking a different pace from, for this episode, I would like to introduce Greg uh, as he explains how a large format camera works. This is the standard camera uh, that was used for many, many years in press photography before we started using 35 millimeter cameras. Uh, we used a 4x5 sheet of film in a, uh, a camera that was uh, a large camera, but it was basically designed to be actually handheld. Uh, and uh, it's quite a trick to hold a camera that big and take uh, successful, but uh, many photographers uh, were very successful. Uh, Ouija is one that you can look up on the internet, uh, uh, and uh, there's actually a film about him. And this is the exact kind of camera that he used for his photography. You may ask why the box is so large, and that's because what is in it is fairly large in itself. And uh, hence the uh, name large format cameras. This uh, camera folds out. Um, it folds up actually into a, a more compact for shipping. And then folds out rolls out there's a set of rails along the bottom and this clips into a position there's a couple knobs in here to adjust the sliding track the whole track slides in and out there's a scale down here along the side and this is actually a distance scale um, you can get take it right out to uh, infinity to focus at infinity and then it'll focus right into about six feet uh, distance and you can read it right off the scale on the side here, there's a rangefinder. Uh, it's an uh, attachment onto the camera, and it's directly linked into the uh, uh, system with the rail and the uh, lens board, uh, such that when you move the uh, uh, lens board in and out with the rail, the uh, feeds back into the rangefinder. And if you sight through the rangefinder, you'll actually get uh, two uh, different views, one from each of the little windows here. And when those two views are synchronized into each other, uh, the camera will automatically have focused on the, uh, whatever the object is that you are uh, uh, focusing on. Handy, it's fast, it's accurate. Uh, make, made this camera uh, quite easy to focus in the uh, field. On the top, there is an external viewfinder, a graphics viewfinder. Uh, this uh, viewfinder is matched to the angle of the lens, the uh, coverage angle of the lens, that uh, for very fast framing, you just hold the camera up, you look for the viewfinder, you frame the uh, scene, and you can release the shutter. It's actually a fairly uh, quick camera to work, uh, despite the size and the complexity of it. The lens is mostly mechanical. There's a, a, a self-setting uh, shutter here, a manual setting shutter. Uh, there is uh, speeds around here. These speed markings on here are the old scale uh, speed markings uh, from about the 1950s or before, where nowadays we've got half, quarter, uh, eighth of a second. This one here goes half, fifth, tenth, twenty-fifth, fiftieth of a second. The scale is a little bit different. Uh, that was changed in the fifties to the modern scale. Uh, there's also the scale down at the bottom for the actual f-stops of the lens. Uh, this is the uh, back of the camera and uh, you can see it's a little bit uh, loose for wear and everything's a little bit of dried out the glue. Uh, 
for fine shooting. If you want to really see what you, you uh, are taking a picture of, there's actually a ground glass at the back and uh, you would actually focus the image right on the uh, back glass here, which gives you a very, very accurate uh, view of what you're going to see because this is also where the film goes in. The film is in a film holder. This is a double-sided film holder. There's two dark slides on here. And it says right now this is uh, uh, loaded with Ecticolor. I'd have to go in a dark room actually pull a slide to confirm that. This uh, film holder, this, it's a fairly old film holder. It's probably from the 1940s. It's actually made out of wood. It's not made out of plastic. And a little aluminum slider in there. Uh, graphics film holder is built by the uh, graphic company, the same company that built the uh, uh, camera. When you've got the camera ready to take a picture, these film holders will slide in the back and you release the slide and you can pull the slide out. The camera is dark inside and uh, if the film is uh, uh, ready to uh, expose, you've got the one side. There's little raised knots here so that you can actually feel which side of the uh, slide is which, even in the darkroom. And then when you finish taking the exposure, you replace the dark slide, and that protects the film. You can withdraw the holder back out into the uh, daylight without exposing the uh, film. This is the actual size of the film in here. It's a very large negative, or, or well, there's larger ones. Uh, this one is four by five inches. Um, you know, scan this on your scanner and see how many uh, pixels you get. Uh, you find this is uh, more than any modern camera as far as megapixels. So uh, the resolution is definitely here. Uh, you would take uh, uh, back in the days, either print this out at exact size by doing a contact print or else put it in a really large and larger and uh, you could get some fantastic large uh, prints and still maintain uh, high resolution and uh, detail. Usually when you're working, you're mounted on a tripod. Today, we've just got it on the table for uh, display. And it's very hard to see the uh, screen in the daylight. Uh, the photographer's trick is to have a dark cloth, uh, typically black, uh, fairly uh, usually more than one uh, layer thick but is of a good quality cloth that if you hold it up to the light, uh, the light doesn't tend to get through. Uh, these were sold in camera stores. I, I don't know exactly who made this one, but uh, to be able to get a, a view, a really good view on the ground glass, see the fine detail, uh, you would actually cover up and uh, work the camera controls from underneath while you're looking at the uh, uh, image on the ground glass. The uh, camera comes with a nice little hand holder here. Uh, this is not actually a graphics uh, one, this particular one. This is fitted off of a Linhoff camera, which is uh, built similar cameras. It's just got a mount on the side of the camera. It cl clicks in and allows you to hold the camera with your left hand. Uh, and becomes quite uh, maneuverable. Uh, and then to take a photograph, you've got the controls, you've got the shutter release on the side, uh, you've got the viewfinder. I've got the my hand firmly on the side of the camera. It's solid. I've got the other hand free to uh, run the controls. You've got the focus control here. You've got the range finder on the front. You adjust the uh, range finder to focus the camera and the shutter is on the side. You focus, uh, not focus, you line up the camera through the viewfinder on the top and you release the shutter uh, and you've taken a uh, photograph. There's two shutters on this camera. There's one shutter, it's in the lens. It's released by this little piston here. And there's a second shutter uh, at the back. It's actually a focal plane shutter. Uh, so that you have a choice of focal plane or uh, iris shutters 
and the back one releases right here to take a photograph. You can see the camera has a nice wire frame around here. This is to give you a really uh, quick uh, way of framing up the subject matter. I can take a really good uh, photograph of the uh, video camera right now. I've got it right in the frame and this, uh, it makes it very, very quick. Uh, way of uh, pointing this camera, lying, uh, lining it up with your shot and making exposure. So despite its complexity and the size, it's actually quite a very uh, uh, quick camera to use. One of the things that this camera has, and a large format cameras usually have, is a uh, control on the, uh, 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 the lens uh, to the film uh, a relationship that uh, the lens board can be brought, brought, risen up, or go down into its normal position. This would be very handy if, you, say, if you're taking a picture of a tall building, you can keep the camera le uh, level to keep the perspective uh, square, and yet the uh, picture would be taking looking up at the uh, camera, but you correct that parallax uh, error. Probably still quite light tight would probably work. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. If the bellows starts going, it's a couple hundred dollars to get a new bellows. You can buy bellows for them. It's not hard to find them. Uh, mind you, that's because of the internet nowadays. You go on the internet and somebody is making bellows for these cameras. Yeah, can you sell them on eBay? Yep. There'll be a lot of this stuff on eBay. 